And happy crafternoon. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and it's great to see all of you coming in from all around the world. Today, we're going to be having a lot of fun because I'm going to do a card where I mix some heat embossing with some foiling. So, we're going to get those two different levels of sparkle and shine. And I'm going to be using the new incentive set that just came out with this last release. I love this set so much. It's called Graphic Tree. And a bunch of people were saying, oh, I hope somebody does a card with it. And I thought it's the perfect one to mix these two different types of sparkle and shine together. So before we get started, though, let's say hello to Tom. Hey, Tom. Hello, hello. Happy crafternoon. Oh. I heard you playing guitar over there earlier, warming up. Yeah, <laughs> it's a beautiful day. It is. It's a beautiful day today. And you know what this weekend is? This weekend is, um, is it uh, daylight savings weekend? Yeah, I don't know if it's savings or the opposite of save. I don't know. It's just we get an extra hour of unable to sleep. Daylight losings weekend. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah. An extra hour of unable to sleep. <laughs> that's, that's what we all need. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, fall behind, right? And spring ahead. So that means we set the clocks back. That'll be kind of nice though on Sunday morning to get that extra hour. Extra hour is wonderful. It yes. is. It is wonderful. It is. Although I do like when it's lighter later. I like driving home when it's not dark at four o'clock, but you know, we're that much closer to spring. So let's just focus on the positive, right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, today I'm really excited. I'm going to show everybody what stamp set I'm going to be using today. This is the stamp set. This is the, um, ooh, that's close, but that's good. This is the graphic tree mini stamp set. And I thought this would be a great one to use for today's card because I'm going to be using some of the toner card fronts by ThermoWeb. And I'm going to use for the background one of our polyglaze sheets. I thought I would use the uh, the winter snow. I use I've been using the flurries a lot, and winter snow is so beautiful too. And I'm just going to have a little kind of perimeter going around my card with that. And then for those of you who are newer, or maybe you don't remember us doing this, we started doing coordinating dies for our incentive sets. So I did pick up the coordinating die set for this one, Graphic Tree, and I'm going to be using that today, especially these little parts here. I'm going to be cutting out some sparkle and shine from there, and I'm going to cut out the tree too. So if you don't have the ability to foil, you can do this same card and just use embossing powder to create your sparkle and shine. I'm going to be doing a mix of both. And I do have my fuse here. Those of you that don't have the fuse, if you have a mink or you have a laminator and you have some polyglaze, you might want to get in on this as well. I am going to turn the machine on and get it heated up to level three. And I'm going to put that aside for now. Okay, so... To begin my card today, I'm going to get um, a piece of white cardstock here. Let me get a piece, a piece of craft there as well. I'm going to zoom in a bit now once again. And we're going to do a little bit of heat embossing. So I'm going to start with my embossing magic pad, and I'm going to rub that over the surface of this white cardstock. This is our 80-pound white cardstock that I'm using. And I'm going to be using some of the Gina K Designs embossing and watermark ink. If you don't have that, you can use um, Versamark, or you can even use pigment ink if you want, like a white pigment ink. Anything that stays wet a little bit longer so that you can emboss is good. 
So I'm going to put this into my Misty just in case I want to stamp it twice. And I am going to start with this graphic tree image. I love this image. It's just got this really cool graphic look to it. And I think it's super fun to color or to do with embossing powder. You don't have to um, necessarily color it in, but it's got spaces in there that you can color in. And then it's got little elements that you can also stamp and cut out with the die set and pop up if you want. Or you can use all of these little elements just to create your own background. So like I said, if you don't have foil and you don't want to do the foil parts of this, you can create your own background using the circles and the snowflakes and the stars to just create an embossed background instead. Is so, that the current? That's the current incentive. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. Yep. It's the current one. So for those of you who placed an order when our new bundle got released, this was the, the one that went up. Okay. So I'm going to use my Chucky tool here. And you know what? I am going to put my glasses on because I cannot see what I'm doing. Okay, that's better. Okay, so I'm going to go with golds today, but I also think that this would look really good with silvers. So either way, whatever you choose to do, any kind of metallic, as long as you have a coordinating foil, now, the gold embossing powder is a deep, antique kind of gold look. So it's going to look very different from the foil, but it will all be gold, and that's what matters. Okay. Let's just get that in there a little bit more. There we go. Just going to blow away the excess, and then I'm going to put this powder back into my jar. Okay. Now I have my heat tool here. I'm using the Wagner heat tool. I'm gonna blow away the excess. I have the Wagner heat tool and I'm going to just heat it up a little bit before I act, actually get started. Okay, yes, yeah, $75 for the incentive set. And then it automatically ships free. $75 spent. $75 in product, right? Right. Yeah. Okay, so look how pretty this is. I love this embossed. It would also look really great in black if you wanted to do it in black instead. But that is such a pretty stamp, isn't it? Look at that nice. And you can see it's a muted shine. It's very antique. Where's my clothespin? You're right. Where's my clothespin? All of my pixie tapes were on my clothespin. Here's my clothespin. I forgot to use my clothespin, so I just burned off a little of my nail polish, but that's all right. <laughs> okay, so I did make a little bit of a mess there. On so my would you Misty. say that uh, level three is the general start place for the fuse? I would say level three. If it's running a little hot for you, you can go down to two, or if you're not getting a good enough foil, try bumping it up to four. But level three is where I use mine, and it seems to work the best for most applications. Yes. Okay, and I'm going to clean off my... Um, my stamp here just so that that Versamark doesn't dry. It's not Versamark. It's embossing in watermark ink and it doesn't dry on there. I might come back to this set in a little bit. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. So now we're going to do a little bit of foiling. And I definitely have embossing powder on my area here. And I want to make sure that I don't have any embossing powder here. So I'm cleaning it all up because, you know, the dust can really prevent good adhesion of the foil. Anywhere that you have dust on your foiled project, you're going to block the fusion between the foil and the polyglaze or the foil and your toner sheets. So you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you have a dust-free area. So if I'm working with embossing powder, I always like to clean the area up first. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I think the color um, foil, I don't know where I put all my foils, but I think the color foil that I'm going to use, I think I'm going to try some glimmering gold. That is just such a pretty foil, and I think that it would look really pretty with this, just to have that little bit of glimmer in there. So I am going to... I have two packs of it here because I can't get enough gold and silver of any kind. I'm going to get one of these toner sheets out. Do we carry reinkers for all of the Gina K colors? We do. We have a reinker for every color. Yes, we do. So I'm going to use one of these. That is one. I don't know why it's out, but. I'll get a new one just in case there's a reason that's out. I don't know why. Okay, here we go. And I like to keep these in my little medium size stamp pockets because it keeps everything together nicely. I have to put a label on this one still. I'm a little behind. And then I am going to trim this down a little bit here because I don't need quite this much. I'm going to, I like to keep these strips for other things so that when I have little details and things that I want to work with, um, I'm going to use a piece of toner sheet and I'm going to use a polyglaze sheet. Now, if you're interested in these, these are available at ThermoWeb, I believe. I believe they sell the toner card fronts. I know they sell the large eight and a half by 11 toner sheets and we have those as well, which can easily be cut down into toner card fronts because they're eight and a half by 11. So you just cut them in half and half again. But this pack came with my penguin kit and I still have a couple sheets left. So I'm using that because it's just sitting right here. Okay, now I'm really trying to decide whether or not I want to use the Glimmering Gold or if I want to use the 14 Carat. Here's the 14 Carat. Which one do you think would look better? Do you think the 14 Carat looks more like this gold and this is more yellow? I think so. I think maybe I should go with this and just, I think it'll look a little bit better. I'll, I'll do that. I'm going to use the 14 carat. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of you are saying 14 carat. It has that same tone to it. I mean, the glimmering gold is spectacular, but I think for this, what I'm trying to do here, mixing these together, I think it's just going to mix a little bit better. Okay. Okay. Oh, good. They sell them now. Excellent. They sell the toner fronts. Okay. So I'm going to take a piece of glimmering gold just one sheet here, that'll do it. And I'm gonna use a Swiffer duster and I'm gonna dust the back of this toner sheet and I'm gonna, I mean of this foil sheet and I'm gonna dust the front of the toner sheet. And then I'm going to put those together. Okay, I'm gonna dust everything off. And then I've got my carrier sheet here. So I'm going to put this foil like this into the carrier sheet. And remember, you always want to feed it into the machine where the fold is. Question, are you aware of any specific applications for the low or really high numbers on the uh, fuse? Well, so if you're using like Decofoil transfer gel, but you're using something like vellum and you want to put vellum, you want to put um, decofoil transfer gel through a stencil over vellum. I would start at one or maybe two. I wouldn't want to put, you know, that kind of cardstock or that kind of paper through too hot. But then let's say you have a real lightweight chipboard, or maybe even you have like a really thick cardstock. You could go up to four or five and see if that would work better. So that's kind of, kind of, what I would use those for. Um, most of the applications that I do are on polyglaze sheets or toner sheets from ThermoWeb. And those are usually anywhere from a 65 to 80 pound cardstock. Like their toner sheets are a little bit thinner, feels more like 65. 
and the polyglaze sheets are on an 80 pound stock, you don't really want to go with a heavier stock than that. If you get toner sheets that are on anything heavier than 80 pound, you're going to find that it's going to be more spotty or you're going to need to use all kinds of shims and things to try to get enough heat on it. That thinner cardstock allows heat to penetrate from both sides as it goes through those rollers. Okay, so now that cooled a little bit. So let's see what we got here. I think we've got something good. There we go. Look at that. Perfect. Not a black spot on it. Spectacular. You can see every little bit of foil is off of this sheet. That's a clear window right there. Okay. Alrighty. So now let's see. Let's do our polyglaze sheet. So we're going to do the snowflakes in gold as well. Would that be shaker cardable? Oh yeah. I guess you could use it as a shaker. Why not? Yeah. You could stretch it real tight over and use it for a shaker card. Sure. It's a great idea. Was that your idea, Tom? It sure was. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's it. You've been great. That's I gotta go. <laughs> you gotta leave now. That's it for the great ideas. <laughs> okay, so you can see I'm cleaning off really well both the front of the polyglaze sheet and the front of the foil. And I'm putting that on top. Now that doesn't have to go right to the edge because the design doesn't go right to the edge. I am gonna clean the front of this as well, just because I don't want any dust near the foil. Okay. Now, if any of that polyglaze was showing on the sides, or if you're using a toner sheet and any toner is showing on the sides, when you send it through the fuse or any laminator, that toner or that polyglaze will melt and it'll get stuck to your carrier sheet. So always make sure that your entire design is covered with foil. Okay. Oh, and somebody had mentioned that they were going to clean their, um, that you could clean the carrier sheet with acetone. And I found out, did a little research, and I found out from my friend Mike, who is a scientist, he said, please don't do that. And here's why. <laughs> this is important not to clean your carrier sheet with acetone. Acetone is extremely flammable, and some plastics actually absorb some of that liquid. And when you send it through the heat, it could actually catch on fire. So we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're just going to leave it. It's not going to hurt anything if it's got a little bit of black on it. We're just going to leave it. Okay. So now we've got this background done. And we're going to just let that cool for a minute. Yeah, well, the acetone can eat it because I know from... I, I used to own salons. I had five nail salons at one time. And when people would come in with their plastic nails, any kind of plastic, we would soak the nails off in acetone and they would just mush away. So we do know that certain plastics will get dissolved by acetone, but there are also certain plastics that won't get dissolved by acetone. So I don't know if this is one of those that won't get dissolved by acetone, but I still would be apprehensive after, you know, hearing Mike's opinion that it could absorb some of the acetone, putting it through the heat element. Ooh, I don't know. I'm a little afraid. I would say just leave it on there and don't worry about it. Okay. So here we go. Oh, Look at that perfect gold foiling. Isn't that spectacular? Oh, I love it. Okay. And then of course you can use this piece over a piece of toner sheet. Interesting question. Can you overlap foil sheets to make sure you have full coverage? Can you overlap foil sheets? Um, you shouldn't have to. You should get full coverage. I mean, what if, I, I think if they have like pieces left. Oh, if you have like. Pieces of foil left that you want to piece together to cover something. Oh, and you want to, yeah, you can. You can definitely do that. It doesn't leave a line. Um, well, if, if you do different colors, you might notice the line, but it should be okay. I've done that before. 
And um, like I did rainbow strips going across and I overlapped them a little bit and it was totally fine. Let's just use this negative piece and see how it looks. Because I think this would be absolutely beautiful on there, don't you? So let's clean it off real well. I love the toner sheets. We're gonna use the negative, cleaning it really well with my Swiffer. And then lay that on top. And then put that into here. Now I like to just kind of like smooth it out so that there's no buckling. And then we're gonna send this through and see how it does. Because even if you have any spots that are missing, you can still cut chunks out like a little square to be a little accent piece or a strip to go across your card. Yes, Joan, we had the carrier sheets and they did sell out. We've got, I don't know, four or 5,000 of them on order, packs of them, and there's two in a pack. So as soon as they come in, we will put those back up. So you can get on the notify me list on our website for those carrier sheets. And when they come back in stock, you'll get an email for those. All right, so let's see what the negative looks like. <laughs> um, ThermoWeb only has black toner sheets right now, but stay tuned. That's all I can say. Stay tuned. Okay, so now you can see it looks like we've got great adhesion here. We want it to cool off for a second. I'm shedding. All right, here we go. I'm gonna pull this off. Oh, look at that. Every little bit we used and look at how beautiful that is. Isn't that great? The Fuse is a great machine. I'm telling you, you're going to have a lot of fun with it. And the thing about it is there's hardly any learning curve at all. You do not have to worry that it's not going to work right and there's no plates to foil and all that. This is just so easy and looks good every time. It really does. Okay, so I'm going to put this away now because we're kind of done with that. And now we're going to start working on this card. So my idea here is to use this as the background and to use this as my focal image. But you can see very different looks when it comes to the shine. But we want to add some of this kind of shine into this image. And we are going to do that by using this piece of toner paper that we foiled. So let me get my die cutting machine out. I always like to foil before I die cut. And the reason why is because when you die cut first, dies leave little dents and stuff into the toner paper. And wherever there's a dent, the foil is not gonna be able to make contact with the toner paper and it's not gonna fuse together. So. All right, a few quick questions. Okay. Um, the restocking of the fuse yes. may probably not before christmas or i just don't know yeah. I, I, you know i wish i could answer that question i just don't know the answer to that we uh, be great if it would come in before christmas and it might but it might not it really depends they tell me anywhere from 60 to 90 days so you know that could be before Christmas, but it also may not be before yeah, Christmas. Yeah, we don't know. So oh, we just okay. don't know. That's why I'm hesitant to answer that question because it just leaves people with, I don't want to like give you false hope, but at the same time, I don't want to be discouraging because it, it may. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm cutting out these little images from the um, toner paper and I'm getting some nice shiny foil. Now, where's my pick and stick tool? It's my plates here for this die cutting machine are just a mess. Well, so, you could make teacher stars like that. You stickers. Really, yes, you could. And you see how I am going to just replace certain elements with the foiled ones. So we're going to mix and match some of these together. Okay. And the highest weight of cardstock that can go in the fuse or other laminators. Well, I don't know about other laminators, but you can put some pretty thick things through here. Um, but I don't, you know, I would say probably stop at around 120 to 130 pound. I wouldn't go any heavier than that. And finally, are your carrier sheets the same as thermal webs? No. 
Our carrier sheets are a plastic. Thermal Web's carrier sheets are a parchment that are silicone lined. So they're very different, but they will work the same way. So if you are looking for carrier sheets and you can't find any, and ours are out of stock, we also carry the, the Thermal Web ones because they're so good. So you can use either. All right, I'm just cutting a few more of these out just so we're making some little accent dots here. And that's, you're, you're cutting, just to clarify, you're cutting uh, out of foil that was put onto the toner sheet, right? That's, that's correct. This is foiled toner sheets. All right, I'm gonna do a couple more just to make sure we can kind of disperse this. Just let me move my fuse over here for a second because I'm actually running into all my sequins and they're flying all over the place. Okay. So I want to try one more thing here. I'm going to see if it works. I don't know if it'll work, but we're going to give it a try. I want to see if I can cut the center of that out. I don't know. We'll see. I think it would be really cute. I'm going to put that on top and I'm going to just put a little piece of masking magic on top. Let's see if that works. I want to make a ring, see if I can make a, a metallic ring. It may not work. <laughs> but, you know, I, I see a lot of people in our group sometimes say, hey, would this work? And I always say, try it see if it works. I mean, you never know until you try it. That's not bad. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. And I think it might look kind of cute, like over one of these maybe. Or just even like that, where you have a little bit of gold, but you have some of that antique gold shining through. Okay, I think I have enough here to get me started. Now I'm gonna cut the tree out. And this one, cutting the tree out, I feel like I would like to do my template trick because I would really like this tree to be centered. And look how much I have left. I can cut, I can make a ton of these cards like this or use it for other things like penguins because you all still have your penguin kit to work with. There's so many fun things to make for the holidays. All right, I'm just, I have this piece of cardstock here. I'm going to make a little tree template out of it because it's got a little goober on it. Let's see if this works. <laughs> yeah, we will just, you know, if you have questions, we'll do our best to answer the questions, but certain questions I just don't know the answers to. And, and I'll tell you if I don't know the answer. So I'm making a little template here for my die cutting so that I can make sure that I get this tree very centered. So you can see I'm just placing it so that it looks very centered. And then I'm gonna just put some tape here and some tape there just to hold it in place. Oops, I moved it. This isn't very strong tape. I like to use that over the die, but I like to use the pixie tape for securing this in place. I know, I always forget about doing this and then at the last minute I'm like, oh, I gotta, gotta make sure that this looks nice and centered. Okay, there we go. That will stay. Okay, now I'm gonna put my die on there and snap it in. This is where I like to use the masking magic because it won't tear the paper. Okay, here we go. Alrighty, so there we go. Now I've got my little tree that's ready. And now I'm going to cut out, I'm going to cut this out with Master Layouts too. 
So let me find Master Layouts 2. And you know I'm going to use some black, because <laughs> I always use black. We use Master Layouts 2 for this. I always like to straighten out my dies. Sometimes they get a little warpy from overuse. It's like an overuse injury. Okay. Oh, definitely we'll have a word of the day. I've been live so many times this week. I really appreciate you guys being here because you're probably exhausted with all of the lives. <laughs> and now I'm going to get a piece of black cardstock and cut out the black panel. Ooh, is that the right size? That looks really big. Let's make sure I didn't put these back in the wrong spot. Okay, well maybe this one was one that I already cut out. Maybe not. That's not bad. That might have been one I hand cut. It doesn't seem quite as perfect, but I think it's better than horrible, so we'll use it. Now, I want to do some smaller panels that I can put my tree on. So I want to take a look at this. This is also part of Master Layouts, too. And I think if I put this here, and then I do my greeting in black underneath, Peace on Earth would fit right in there really nicely. That would give me that little extra black pop of black in my card that I like. So I'm gonna do that. So we're also using Master Layouts 2 for this. And I have a piece of white cardstock that I'm going to cut out. Oh, I lost my other plate, but it's right there. And then I'm going to cut out the black panel using the coordinating die, also in Master Layouts 2. I'll cut this one out with a piece of black. So Tom! While I am doing this, do you happen to have a word of the day today? I see people saying word of the day. They want your word of the day. All right. <laughs> well, you know, I've been, whoops, mic down. Okay. Do you know I've been a little preoccupied with the guitar recently? Just uh, putting a lot of time in and giving a lot of attention. So, my question to you is, would that make me a guitar assist? <laughs> maybe spending a little bit too much time? Well, maybe. <laughs> That's funny. The word of the day. That's cute. I like it. <laughs> guitar assist. Oh my goodness. All right. So now here is another option that we could do. We could put our saying right here. We could do wishing you joy too. And we could bring this down a little bit more. But I kind of like peace on earth. I feel like that's, or celebrate the season. We could you celebrate the season? If we did one of these, like Merry Christmas, we could do Wishing You Joy. But if we did that, we'd probably have to use a sentiment strip. Let's get some stamping in here. Okay, so... Guitar assist. That is pretty funny, Tom. All right. I don't want to lose these either. These dies are tiny, so make sure you put them back on your magnet so you don't lose them. I already lost the star, the small star. Oh, no, I didn't. Thank God I put it back. Okay. Let's make sure all my things are over there. So let's get the greeting panel on here. So I'm going to put this up here in the corner. And actually, I'm going to tape it down. Tape it down. And I'm going to 
gonna lay this here. Now this is going to go outside of the panel and I'm okay with that. So do you like celebrate the season or peace on earth? I feel like peace on earth just fits better. Let's see what they say. Okay, peace on earth. I've got a peace on earth. What else do I have? Celebrate. <laughs> Let's see in the comments come in. All right. I'm getting a few more. S I'm getting, oh man, it's very, very even right now. Okay, well, let's let's think about it. Peace on Earth fits better, but celebrate the season might make more sense with the type of image that it is. Plus, check this out. Doesn't celebrate the season kind of in a way look like the base of the tree? You know, because it's a little bit deeper. Peace on Earth is a little small for that, but celebrate the season kind of looks like the base of the tree. I think I'm going to do celebrate. Okay. All right. We're going to do celebrate the season. I appreciate you hanging in there with me while I worked through that. And thank you for your opinions. I feel like celebrate the season got a few more because I get comments from everywhere. So they're coming in on both Facebook, Facebook page, Facebook group, and also Twitch and YouTube. So we've got people from all of those places coming in. So you're only seeing whatever platform you're watching on. You're not seeing everybody. We're seeing everybody. Okay, now I'm going to test this to make sure that this looks straight because this will be ugly if it's not straight. There we go. We'll put that there. And I'm going to just do a little black ink. How do you get on Twitch? Twitch is an app, kind of like Facebook, YouTube. It's for gamers mostly, but I started going on Twitch a few years ago. Okay, that looks straight, but it looks like it's too far this way. So I'm going to redo it. I started going on Twitch, I don't know, a couple of years ago. And um, we don't get a ton of people on Twitch, but we do get some and I don't like to not be there for them. So we, we decided to just stick with it. Okay. That looks straight and that looks more, a little bit more centered. Okay, we'll try it again. I love to check it first. It just makes me feel better. Yep, that looks more centered to me. And that's going to look a little bit more like the base of the tree because it's a little bit thicker, a little wider or deeper. Okay. We're going to do it twice just to make sure it's dark enough. Now, you could, by all means, um, emboss this if you want, but I think that... A little pop of black in there will just tie that outside. And is it a Gina K card if it doesn't have a pop of black? I don't think it is. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's great. Your son found me on Twitch for you. That's awesome. Yeah, Twitch is fun. It, it just doesn't stay on Twitch. That's one of the reasons why I, I won't just do something like Twitch. This stuff stays on Facebook and YouTube forever, but... On Twitch, it only lasts for a certain amount of time, and then the uh, streams go away as you continue to stream. Okay, so now we have that panel right there. So now let's assemble this card. Also, I'm going to put this all on a white card base because I feel like even though it's not super clean and simple, I think the white card base will give it just what it needs. I don't think there's any color that I would want to put all of this on. That I think a color would kind of interfere with the gold. I did not put that on straight. 
I definitely should have cut this panel out of master layouts too, but that's not bad. Okay, so let's get a white card base and then we will get stacking our sparkly, shiny gold things. So I've got my big, my big boy out here. I'm gonna cut a card base at four and a quarter by 11. And then I'm gonna get my score buddy out and we're gonna score this at the four and a quarter inch mark. I mean the five and a half inch mark. Okay. Oh, I think it's, yeah, I actually did a video last year where you can foil right over embossing powder and it's not as crisp as foiling, but it does grab some of the foil and it creates a little bit of sparkle and it's kind of nice too. So check out that video. It's on my channel. All right. So this is going to go onto the white card base. That's so pretty, just like it is, isn't it? I mean, that would make such a nice card with just a greeting on it because it's got so much, so much shine and it's so graphically pleasing. I love that. Sandra is asking, is it possible to foil the toner sheet with the golden second time to foil the flakes? The golden flakes negative. Well, I did that. I did that right here on toner paper. So um, if you rewind and go back to the beginning of the video, you'll be able to see how I used that negative piece to create a second panel, which would look really pretty. You can see that would be very pretty on another card for sure. Okay. So now this is gonna go right into the card here in the center. And then I'm gonna pop up the tree. Putting that in the center. Does it look centered? It looks pretty centered. Okay. And then I'm definitely gonna pop up the tree. I feel like the tree could be raised up a bit. So let's do that with some foam squares. Now, depending on how high up you want them to be, if, if you really want this popped up, up high, I would use the shaker strips because that's going to give you a decent amount of height. Should I do that or should I just do the foam squares? That's not going to be quite as high, but maybe we could pop up some of the circles too. Yeah, let's use the foam squares and then maybe we'll pop up some of the circles too. Okay, so I think we misunderstood that question. Um, Sandra's wondering if the negative flakes can be foiled so they are different color than the background. So if yes. you ran that through again. Yes, you can, you definitely can do that. You can double foil. So if you wanted to, and what Sandra's asking is, can she go back with like silver on top of this and all the snowflakes, all the black snowflakes will turn silver. Yes, you can. You can do that. But the one thing you have to know is that when you send it through a second time, this foil might be a little more dull than it is right now. So it does change a little bit when you send it through a second time. But yes, you can double foil. That toner will remelt and it will grab the next color. Is, does that, is that what it was, Tom? I think so. Okay. All right. So I've got these on here. <laughs> no, this is not part of the ThermoWeb kit. This is actually our incentive stamp set for the month. Okay. So we're going to put this right here where Celebrate the Season is down at the bottom. And this is going to extend outside the top and both sides just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now we've got that little bit of dimension in there. 
And now we are going to add some of these to add some shine in here. So these are going to become like embellishments. And we can also add embellishments. So we can do both. We can really jazz this thing up and create a lot of sparkle and shine. So I'm going to get my Connect glue. And I'm going to first, before... I use my glue. I'm going to lay a few of these on here. So I definitely want the star on the top to be shiny. That's not straight, but it will be. So I want the star on top to be shiny. And then, you know, you can add like one in the center like that. So you still get both. You get the antique gold embossing, but then you have that in the center. And then like one of these could fill in one of these. This ring I think would be fun maybe. Let's do it over this. So you can still see the lines on the inside. Put this in here. And over here and that here like that i think that'll give us lots of sparkle but it will also maybe we'll do one more down here or should we do one here okay i think a big one here and a little one in there and then we'll mix in a few other little embellishments like maybe some gold sequins or even some gold pearls so now we're going to start over. I'm going to put some glue down. And then I'm going to lay this on top. And that'll give me a chance to kind of get it in place so it looks straight. There we go. OK. These pick up just like embellishments, which is kind of cool. So you can use your pick and stick tool to position them. But they're not embellishments, so they, you know, they're a little puffy. So once you get it in place, you got to kind of put a little pressure on it. I'm trying to center it. There we go. That's more centered. Okay. We'll let that dry for a second. Is the back of the toner sheet toner too? No. The back is just paper. You mean the black toner sheet? Yes. Yeah. The back, the back is just paper. And I like doing this as opposed to doing like just all sequins or all embellishments because this image here is your focal image and you want those golds to match. You know, you want that gold to match whatever's going on in this part over here. When I turn it, you'll see what I'm, what I mean. All right, for this one, I'm going to actually just do a little bit of glue. Probably should use the tweezers. Let me get the tweezers. Where are they? There they are. There we go. And it's not a perfect ring, but I still think it looks kind of cool. I forget where it was. I think it was right here is where I was going to put it. This one's going to go in here. So I love the idea that with a set like this and a die set like this, that you can kind of make your own shiny enamel dots out of foil and they can really be glittery. Move over, there we go. Last one here. Did I lose one somewhere along the way? I 
I don't know if I did or not. I don't think I did. So let's add some. Can you see, though, now you've got that same shine going in all of that? And it brings it all together. Okay, so now let's add a couple other things. Maybe we'll add some tiny little pearls to this. Got some of my metallic pearls here. And I think that they actually will be a nice little addition because they're small and it'll give you a different look. So you could even pop those in anywhere, like if there's an empty space like that. that right there. I think I've seen you in the past it's, and some cards do just a card like this. You do a one tiny splash of a totally different color. I have done that. Like red or something. Yep. I have done that. Like little berries or something. Love the little pearls on here too. Okay, I feel like we need like something up in this area here. So maybe I'll do a bigger one right on here. There's some bigger ones. And maybe something in there. Maybe I'll do a tiny one in there. one up in here, something on the star, because the stars are getting neglected in all of this, because I don't really have star embellishments. So let's just put a tiny little, tiny little pearl on the star. If I could turn it over, it would be helpful. And that will dry clear. I used a lot of glue on that. All right, so there we go. We've got like three different kinds of textures going on now on this card. I really do like it. I feel like I could keep going because it's super fun to add these little things. Maybe put one in there on the snowflake. Sometimes it's hard to walk away. But it really feels like an adorned tree now. It doesn't feel so plain even though it wasn't really plain, it feels more like, you know how like Christmas trees have different types of ornaments on them. It feels more like that. But then you get that beautiful antique gold in there too. So let's add one more in there because I can't stop. <laughs> I don't think you can ever have too much going on here and i'm not even counting at this point because i know like sometimes you have to like count the gems to see if you have like an even or an odd amount not for this you just it, adorn until you feel like you are just going to give up oh that's pretty i do like the little pearl in the star too all right do we want one more down here? Yeah, we do. We want one more down here because there's really no pearls down here at all on this row. Some of you might think this is too much, and that's okay. I can be too much sometimes. All right, I'm giving up now. So there we go. There is that card. Isn't that fun? Oh, I love it. I love it so much. I hope you guys like it too. What do you think, Tom? Spectacular. <laughs> That's really fun. Now, of course, this one's going to be a little thick to mail in just a regular envelope. So this might be one that you'd want to put a gift card in and hand deliver to someone or, you know, put it in a padded envelope or something. But that is really fun. And it is a way to mix that exact gold that's back here, which I think ties it all together. And then you have the other golds in here that give you some separation. It's not all exactly the same, which makes it more interesting. Okay. Well, let's give this card away, Tom. Okay. <laughs> all right. Drum roll, please. Hmm. 
Oh, and the lucky winner today is Pam Couples. Pam! Yay, Pam! Congratulations. You are the winner. So send your name and address to info at GinaKDesigns.com, and I will get this one out to you. But it will be in a padded envelope. It's not coming in a plain envelope, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, this was so much fun today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you'll give this a try, maybe get some foil. Now, the other thing too is if you don't have foil like this, but you have some foil cardstock, you can even go so far as to just do a hole punch and punch out some foil cardstock to create that difference between the embossing powder and the foil look. And then adding those gold embellishments on there really does make a difference. But try it with gold sequins or rhinestones, whatever you have, and make it your own. All right, everybody. Well, I'm going to try to get back here with a five-minute card idea this weekend. And then Tom and I will be back next Tuesday night with another Stampin' Chat Live. In the meantime, stay safe and healthy. We love you all so very much. And we'll see you again Mwah, real soon. Bye-bye.